that we carry is the FireEye uh, PPC 6000 and NX6100, and that's what I'm going to talk a little bit about here right now. Um, what we have, again, is the catalog cut sheets on, from, our, from our resource book here that, uh, again, give the descriptions and details of the uh, PPC 6000, which is on the right-hand side, and the NX6100, which is on the lower portion of the left-hand side of the sheet. Um, what, one good thing about FireEye is they really try not to obsolete anything. Um, and what you see on the top left-hand sheet here it, of, the, uh, of the page 35 is the, one of the original Nexuses, 3100 to 4100. And they are still available if you do have those on your boilers as, uh, for spare parts. Um, but that's one thing that, that FireEye kind of rests their head on is the, the fact that they really try hard not to obsolete products and they, and they make them available. Um, after they have um, uh, new products designed and come out in, into the field. Right, and by integrated, uh, you'll see in the left-hand side of the page, they're talking about the fact that the flame safeguard is integrated with the linkage of the solution. Correct. Whereas on the right-hand side, you'll see that's obviously lacking. Chuck's going to talk about that in a moment. Yep. Um, uh, we have uh, a um, menu here, if you will, of parts and pieces for the NX6100, PPC6000. Uh, that ranges everything from the different types of servo motors you can get to expansion interfaces for um, O2 trim or additional memory or communications, um, O2 probes, sensors for pressure and temperature. So uh, we, we try and, and, and give you as much ammunition as you can while, as, you're, as you're looking through and figuring out what, what you may need. Or, again, feel free to give us a call and we'll be happy to help you out. And one of the things I just wanted to mention, Chuck, is that on the, honey, on the Honeywell control links, you needed an external pressure controller that gave a milliamp signal. In the FireEye realm, we just connect a steam pressure or water temperature transmitter to the controller, and it's got its own onboard temperature or pressure control. So we don't need the uh, external modulating control because it's integral. Great. Thank you, John. Oh. Okay, uh, talking about a specific uh, part here, we're going to look at the PPC6000, which um, relates very similarly to the Honeywell control links. Um, it works in conjunction with the, with an existing flame safeguard, um, but some of the differences are is it allows you to use a VFD on your forced draft fan, and, and it allows that to be integrated into the, into the control, as well as allowing O2 trim. Um, that might be a question that we can talk about at the end of, uh, of the presentation here, is when to use O2 trim and, um, and, and how it works. Uh, a VFD, very very simply, is a variable frequency drive that we um, uh, attach into the uh, electrically to the force draft fan that allows the fan motor to operate from, say, 15 or 30 hertz all the way up to 60 hertz, allowing you to save a great deal of money on the uh, electrical power required to run that fan, because typically it's running at 100%, but it's very, very frequently not required to be run at 100% when, when, when the boiler is in, in, in operation. Um, there is, in these systems, uh, block programming available. So you can do something, uh, say you could do um, water level control inside of the PPC 6000 as well as the 6100, um, as well as uh, PID control is available. Um, sequencing, uh, doing lead and leg up to four boilers, I'll discuss that a little bit, is available off the shelf in the PPC 6000. Um, the actuators allow for uh, CAN bus communications. Uh, one thing with the FireEye that works really well for field wiring and communications is that it's a, a two-wire pair that's daisy-chained from the controller to each actuator back to the controller, allowing for simple wiring and, um, and operation. That's controller area network. That's essentially a digital communication protocol. Mm -hmm. So we get, rid, uh, we get some additional benefit from the digital technology in terms of diagnostics and resolution. Mm -hmm. um, and um, similar to the Honeywell control, this does come with as a parts and, and pieces, so we can panelize the, um, the parts and pieces to fit your application as required. Sure, or you can purchase it loose depending mm -hmm. on your uh, in-house time and uh, abilities. Yep. Um, the FireEye Nexus 6100 is, um, a, again, their, their higher level uh, linkage control system and it provides the flame safeguard already integrated into it. Um, very similar features to what the 6000, PPC 6000 offers as far as VFD and O2 trim and the block programming. 
Um, the, the one thing that, that this does offer that the other ones don't is there is a color touch screen available for this as well. And then the color touch screen can be used for up to four boilers. Um, and you can actually have the color touch screen mounted in a boiler operator's office if you want it. And, and you could use that as a master and then have little displays out at each boiler so that you can see and trend and, and look what's going on with your boiler and your boiler houses in your boiler house. Amortize your investment over four boilers instead of one. Sure. Exactly. Um, as I mentioned previously, we were going to talk a little bit more about VFDs. And here, here you have in the, in the picture on the right, I apologize for its clarity, our, uh, our pictures of what uh, our VFDs ranging from smaller horsepower to a larger horsepower, focusing on the uh, combustion air fan there. And there you see the actual small display in the picture from FireEye for the yep. It's the display on the very right-hand side of the gray control panel that's put in there. Um, leading and lagging. Uh, this is this is something that that FireEye offers on their on their linkages control packages. Is a, a lead and lag package that, that allows for up to four boilers to be controlled and uh, rotated through. So you make sure everyone gets the same amount of runtime and that your 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 load is spread out throughout the four boilers and and also too in case a, a, a boiler should happen to fail, you don't compromise maintaining pressure or water temperature, the next boiler simply sequences right in the cover for the first. So it keeps you uh, seamless. Great. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, what we're going to go through now is a uh, actual installation. We have a number of pictures here starting with a boiler that has nothing, nothing done to it other than it's probably been run a really long time. <laughs> it looks old. It, it looks old. Um, and, and what we have here, real simple, is on, on the, on the left-hand portion here, I got my, my, uh, my mouse. We have our, um, our, our uh, act mod modular uh, actuator that has a linkage going down to an, uh, uh, the radial, yep, down cool. to the jack shaft. Going down to the jack shaft on the um, radial arm, as well as moving over to the oil metering valve. And it's going also to the gas. So th this is this is a great example of a of a boiler that you can probably save a lot of energy on. Um, there's a uh, 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 close-up shot of the oil metering valve with the um, characterizable yep, trim. Yep, characterizable trim right there. And um, the reason I, I have the the, the uh, close-up of this is that we're going to show another close-up in a few slides here that show the. Uh, servo attached to it with a with a with a field um, developed bracket. And what's interesting here in this picture, because it is so close and you can see it better, is that you'll see there is a number of set screws here, and uh, the set screws are essentially what are adjusted during a tune-up to characterize the fuel order ratio. So you can see a person's got a fair amount of mechanical work to do there when they do this setup initially. Mm -hmm. so moving along. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, just another shot of the. Um, Actuator with the um, jack shaft coming off of, with the with the shaft coming off of it going down to the radial arm and then um, moving over to, to the oil. Okay, um, we have started our installation. Uh, a couple changes here. There's a, a small um, kicker panel that's mounted to the left of the main control panel, um, and the display is mounted in there. We have the jack shaft removed from the entire system along with the um, uh, actuator, or mod motor, I should say. A little bit further along, uh, the display is on. It's mounted. It's in. It's running. You can actually see the, the uh, color on it. Um, you notice from each of the actuators, you have a number of pieces of conduit coming through it. Uh, there is a separate conduit connection for control voltage as well as for power for the actuator. Um, that's that's one area where um, the, the fire eye actuators and the Honeywell actuators differentiate um, is you, you have a two wire pair going from each one, each actuator to the controller for the fire eye. For this one, you, you have uh, specific home runs from each actuator to the controller. Um, as I mentioned again previously, uh, here's the oil metering valve, and we have the servo mounted to it. Uh, with a, uh, a field uh, developed and made bracket. Um, there, every oil metering valve, the way everyone is mounted and, and used, um, can almost be like a snowflake depending on the boiler and the burner that it has. So 
the one thing that Honeywell leaves up to um, the in installation is a way to figure out and have a, uh, a bracket to made for for that for that meter. So that that's going to have to be done in the field. Yeah. Um, a close up here again of a actuator attached to a um, gas butterfly yep, valve. Gas butterfly valve with the separate conduit connections. Uh, coming out of it, like I like I mentioned, and those are a little bit more generic. So Honeywell does offer a bracket kit for their V51 butterfly control valves, and through re-drilling, quite often you can make it fit with the Eclipse valve, as you see here. Um, wiring is pretty much pretty much done. There's a um, the, the display is powered up, it's running and operating. You can see there's a bit of a curve put in there, but I, I would say it's pretty rough curve. But it's um, it's just in there to, to kind of get, get the boiler up and running and moving. So what you'll find is during the ignition process, you'll see crosshairs literally moving across the screen to show you where you're at. And then after ignition, you'll see those crosshairs move that uh, up and down the curve as the boiler responds to the demand in the plant. There's diagnostics across the top, tells you what's going on in a, kind of a, a glance. Mm -hmm. Very nice to, to have. Yep. Uh, and there it is completed. Now that's not the boiler we were looking at, but that pretty much summarizes what we were looking at with a uh, actuator on the left, on the left here for the um, air. We have one on the uh, here for the oil. Uh, there's one down below for the gas. And then finally, we have the, um, the kicker panel with the um, color touchscreen displaying it for for, for um, operating the boiler and viewing where you're at in the curve. 